Hello, I'm Patrick Leary again. I am the Vice President of Market Development with Redline Communications, which is a developer, manufacturer, and professional services organization that fields industrial grade LTE uh, for private networks, as well as proprietary solutions for everything from autonomous vehicle environments, um, et cetera. But this is part four of kind of an LTE primer. I hope you've found this informative. And there's really kind of right now, um, one final point I'd really like to mention because I was recently at an event um, where people seemed a little bit unsure about some things. So I, I want to use this opportunity to help maybe clear something up. So we've mentioned that there'll be this Borg, right? This SAS system that um, all the base stations will have to connect into it. So there's, there's some subtleties I haven't gone over in the details of um, the power levels of equipment that defined what's called a category A or a category B device. A category A device um, is a lower powered device. A category B device is a higher powered device that has to report um, information into the SAS. So depending on whether you're a category A or your category B device details how much information you have to feed the SAS. Right? So if you're a B device and you're operating at higher power, maybe that means you're, you know, you're, you're a one watt small cell or something on a post or a light pole in a city, or you're on a tower in a rural environment and you're not doing um, mobile, but maybe you're doing uh, fixed wireless broadband and you're leveraging the higher power to get better range, that defines you as a category B device. And the things that you have to report into the SAS go into kind of the cloud to help the SAS manage the interference environment. And there's been some, some nervousness that this would somehow be insecure or that the FCC gets your information or whatever it is. Let's be clear, regardless if you're a category A or category B device, no data transits to the SAS in terms of you, you, no user data transits to the SAS, right? The only thing that these base stations or these category B CBSDs, citizens broadband service devices, communicate up to the SES are things like heartbeat, um, azimuth, power level, things like this, right? The only thing they communicate are these bits of data um, in the RF environment that enable the SAS algorithm to make um, quality decisions about what the interference environment looks like, right? So they can manage the spectrum. It's not receiving user data, any of that sort of thing. So that's one. Two, it's not the FCC that's getting this stuff, right? This is the private sector. Google, Federated Wireless is another one. It's an important organization that has been in it from the beginning, helping to create this SaaS. Um, Comscope is creating one, and there's a number of others, right? And they all have to go through a rigorous process with the FCC to become approved. And then they all have to talk to each other, right? And um, so that they can coordinate the interference environment in this kind of macro way. But these are private organizations, they're not SEC. So three, people are afraid that the, the SAS is dynamically gonna move them all over the place, hither and yon, and it's gonna be very disruptive. No, first of all, any gear operating within this band, once the rules go fully into effect, have to be able to operate across the entirety of that range from 3.55 all the way up to 3.7 gigahertz. Um, two, if the SES, for example, um, through its electronic sensing capability, which is kind of another, um, another thing to explain maybe in a later session, if they sense a radar fires up, or if they're trying to move um, a general authorized access user from a priority user, then the SES basically sends a message to the system that you have to relocate within a certain kind of time frame. Um, but currently it's not dynamic, right? Currently it gives the operator the ability to do the work to move it. At a later date, it probably could be dynamic, but even then it would exist and happen largely in real time without any kind of real disruption to anything. Um, but that said, even within the FCC rules, uh, they've made it clear that if you're a priority access licensee, and you're operating in, in rural spaces away from the coast where radar might fire, the odds that you're going to be moved are very because of some incumbent user popping up, 
military. Very, very, very rare, right? So the SES will basically assign you a piece of spectrum and chances are you won't move, right? You're not gonna move. You're not gonna dynamically be moved all over the place. In fact, people will have to move away from you because you're the priority user. And if you're operating under no license, you're a GAA user, those are the ones that would have to move away from you. So if you have a PAL in most places of the country, you might as well think of it like you own a fixed piece of spectrum because it's not moving. Okay, so that's that's three important things about the SAS. Um, another thing um, I wanted to mention, and let's see here. 